So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, our concept uh, on, our, on a natural monopoly. So it's an extension or a special type of uh, monopoly in which uh, it may be potentially uh, the case that this monopolist would be able to feasibly serve uh, the entire market demand at a lower cost than if the market uh, were to be perfectly competitive. So this is typically the case uh, for government-owned public uh, utility companies and other cases. So let's break down this case. So it is possible that a firm can dominate a market solely because of its underlying production technology. And this gives uh, rise to economies of scale at a very substantial level. So when we say economies of scale, as the production becomes greater and greater, the average cost would uh, go further down and down. Which means that, uh, especially when it comes to a monopolist, some of these technologies have a lot of barriers to entry, or are quite expensive rather. Uh, the monopolist can capitalize on these barriers to entry, and it may be the case that uh, as it increases its production, uh, it gives rise to further economies of scale and it brings down its average cost as it produces more and more. So if that's the case, uh, the monopolist okay, can capitalize uh, and realize those uh, that large economies of scale to be able to satisfy the entire market demand. So this is a key concept in a natural monopoly. A natural monopoly is a scenario wherein the firm or the monopolist can feasibly satisfy the entire market demand at okay at a per unit cost loss uh, less than the industry consisting of two or more firms. Meaning, the monopolist being just one firm can feasibly serve all consumers at a lower cost than if the market acted perfectly competitively, or oligopolistically, or whatever. So alternatively, a natural monopoly occurs when the average cost of production declines throughout the relative range of the product demand. Okay, so let's explain that graphically. Okay, so suppose we have a case here. So we have an orange case and a large and a green case. So the orange scale represents a smaller scale plant. So we have marginal cost and average total uh, cost curves here. So for MC1 and ATC1, that's a small scale plan. Say that uh, we have a production of Q here, Q1. And say this is uh, some level, say 50,000. Okay, just some arbitrary number. And at this quantity, the price that will be charged is P1. Okay. Now, when we get to a larger scale plan, okay, because of the economies of scale and all of that, okay, uh, the monopolist will be able to provide Q2, which is, say, 250,000 units, just an arbitrary number. And, of course, the price will be lower based on this graph. That's P2. It will be lower. Now, suppose that the market demand, the range of market demand is just this one. Okay, so let's create a market demand curve here. Say it's this curve here, okay? That demand curve falls within just the relative range of the economies of scale. That is, uh, the economies of scale being that the long-run average total cost, okay, goes down and down until it reaches a minimum. And your product demand lies within that portion, and it suggests that, so our key conclusion is that uh, clearly it would be more efficient and less costly, okay? So more efficient and less costly and less costly for, uh, uh, and in the public interest, for one firm, okay, in this case the monopolist firm, to operate, to operate, a larger scale plant in this example, a larger scale plant than uh, than have multiple than have than have multiple firms. Okay, than have multiple 
firms uh, handle the production. So say five firms, seven firms, that, which are smaller in scale than say uh, five smaller firms or smaller plants. Okay, so that's a brief illustration of a natural monopoly. So let's dive into the concept a bit more. Okay, so we have a graph here, which is another case of a natural monopoly. So for example, okay, so let's just follow here. In the absence of any government regulation, the monopolist will produce QM and will charge PM. Why is that the case? So we have here a demand curve, an average cost curve, a marginal cost curve, and a marginal revenue curve. So if you recall, okay, for a monopolist, the condition is MR equal to MC, right? So that occurs at point H. So what you do to determine the price, you bring it up to the demand curve and you charge PM. And that quantity is QM, okay? So this is without regulation. Now, the cost of the monopolist, the cost of the monopolist is only here, okay? So say, let's name this uh, B, C. So the total cost of the monopolist is just zero. So there, uh, so for the monopolist, total cost is zero QM B C. So essentially, okay, it's its revenue is PM. Okay, so its total revenue is equal to um, PM A Q M zero. So the difference between that, of course, is profit, and you can see that this shaded area here is a profit that the monopolist accrues, okay? Uh, because there's no government regulation. Now, as we know in a monopolist, there's some form of deadweight loss, okay? And essentially, that's this uh, triangle here, okay? So say, let's this J, so that's that bi a big triangle, a big right triangle there. And uh, to be able to eliminate the deadweight loss, some regulatory agency or government might force the monopolist through price controls to set the price at a perfectly competitive price. So that's at P, at uh, this level, wherein P is equal to MC. Remember, that's our condition for a perfectly competitive market. And that occurs at point E. So this is the quantity that will be produced. This is the price that will be charged. Okay, but note that, okay, uh, in here, because okay of the declining nature of the firm's cost curves, the price, which is PPC, falls below the average cost. So the average cost is here, okay, and PPC is below that. Therefore, uh, there is some uh, loss that the monopolist will have to swallow or will have to intake because of this regulated price. And that... Uh, that loss, okay, looks something, okay, uh, I'll just draw it here, like this. It's this, essentially, this shaded area here. Okay, that's the loss of the monopolist, uh, of the monopolist under that, under this uh, scenario. So, it's not good for the monopolist, of course, to operate at this loss. So, since no firm can operate indefinitely at the loss, this poses some dilemma for government. Either it must abandon this goal of marginal cost pricing, that is to price it in the same way as a perfectly competitive market, or the government must subsidize the monopoly forever in order for the price to be affordable. So the way out of this sort of dilemma is, as we'll go through in the next few videos, would be one could be two-part pricing systems in which the monopolist will charge a higher price to consumers who use it more and essentially lower price to those who uh, don't need it as much or are marginal users. So that's a two-part pricing system. Or another approach is by setting the price charged by the natural monopoly is essentially to permit the monopolist to charge some price above average cost, which is deemed fair. Although that's of course subject to some debate. So we'll delve into uh, these forms of um, two-part pricing systems and fair pricing in the next few videos. So thank you for your attention.